So I love requests in Python. It's the backbone to almost all of the HTTP clients. It's a gold standard. It's got the easiest to use syntax, yet still very powerful. Uh, but there's, and you know, it gets recommended a lot. You see it always recommended in web scraping tutorials, but the problem is that it's just not that great for web scraping. It lacks one key feature, which I wanna go into in this video and try and explain and show you how you can easily drop another package in that's gonna do this for you, which means you're gonna get access to more sites without getting blocked. So I am talking about TLS fingerprinting, which basically is a way that the anti-bot companies can identify your request regardless, mostly of headers, et cetera, et cetera, that you use. And we need to be able to act more like a browser. Using an HTTP client that offers a solid TLS fingerprint is a great step to unlocking sites. But when it comes to scaling that up, you will need to use proxies. I use Proxy Scrape, who are kind enough to sponsor this video. We get access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center, and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. I use a variety of proxies depending on the situation, but I recommend you start out with residential, but make sure you select countries that are appropriate to the site you're trying to scape and match your own country where possible. But to be fair, I've had great success with mobile proxies recently, and I'm gonna be using those in this project. Either way, it's still only one line of code to add to your project, and then you can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest. And also any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need, it doesn't ever expire. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Now let's get on with the code. So now one way you can do that, which I actually do do a lot, I advocate this technique, which is quite useful, but you know, don't always need to do it. So I'm gonna to come to this page, we're gonna reload it, and I'm gonna get these uh, response headers, uh, the request headers, and we're gonna have in here a cookie. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this as curl, and I've already done it here. So basically what this is, is that this is the full request that my browser made. So this is gonna have the cookies, all the headers from the browser. But to be able to get these, and these are the important ones here, the CF ones, the Cloudflare ones, to, in order to get these, we have to load the page up with a browser. So you can take these and you can then, you know, reuse them across a session and make more subsequent requests. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So this is just the sort of standard, what you'd see in kind of like you do a basic tutorial, you know, use your user, user agent, you always need that. And if we do UV run standard pie, we're gonna get 403. Now I'm using UV as my package manager here, which is kind of like hopefully the direction that Python's package manager is going. If you wanna know more about it, just Google Python UV, it's by Astral, you'll find it. Um, definitely worth trying and looking into but just know when I do UV run I'm just running Python so we can see we've got 403 it's not going to work now if I check out the actual request that I copied over from my browser with you know these important cookies oh didn't mean to go down there these important cookies and headers when I do response dot let's do status code so we don't get a big wall of text and now we run this one instead we're going to get 200 so it's not a surprise because you know we're using the, all the headers and the cookies from our browser, so we're gonna get that pass. But if I was to go ahead and just you know have a look here instead, and we're gonna use this session from the TLS client, which is this package right here, let's make this bigger, which is gonna mimic our TLS fingerprint to an actual browser, and that's gonna give us access and unlock sites so much more. Uh, this is just one of the options available to you. There's also curl CFFI, there's another one which I'm looking at, which I haven't really used yet, called Noble TLS, which is async. Uh, and we can see right here that it's all of this information. Now this is really interesting. It's all like about JA3 strings, different sort of settings and everything like that that is gonna be coming from your browser originally that we are now gonna be mimicking. And basically what this means is if I was just to run this code instead, UV run main, I'm gonna get that 200 response and the data is gonna come back just like that. So what I wanna do now is I want to build upon that and I wanna do a bit more of a bigger project and show you how we can actually use that. And we're gonna use the same the same site that we did up here. Uh, we're gonna go pull some information off and it's not really relevant, but the, the technique is more what I'm on about. I just wanna show you a little bit more about what UV does. It, if you do uh, create a UV project, it gives you all this information and this is my pyproject.toml file. You can see here, these are the dependencies that I'm using. So if you wanna, if you want to 
um, recreate the code that we're about to write, you need to install these dependencies individually through pip, however you would do normally. I'll talk about this extract when we get there, but it's basically just a way of extracting information from HTML in a very specific way. You don't need rich, but I print with rich always. And typing extensions is needed for the TLS client that we've got here. So now you can see those, that's what you're gonna need to run this project, but you don't need to do it through UV. So I'm gonna open up my main file and we're gonna import what we need. And I'll make this bigger so we can all see it. Um, and now I'm gonna do this like follow, follow along with me as I do this. So fair warning, there will be typos. I know people have complained about that before. It is what it is. If I was a perfect typing, then you know that would be good, but I'm, I'm absolutely not. So we're just gonna have to deal with it, and I'm just gonna import what we need. So instruct uh, dot JSON LD. Um, this is a clue if you followed any of my other videos as to what this package does. Um, I do this a lot. Import JSON LD extractor, and uh, from rich import print. And what else are we gonna need? Oh from data classes, import in data class. This is too big, this text, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. I'm gonna use data classes in this one. Normally I just use Pydantic, um, you can absolutely do that, do that as well, but I figured I would go with the one less dependency. So we'll create our data class uh, as we get to the data. But the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a session. So I'm gonna do create session function and I'm going to return from this, I'm gonna use some type hints here, a TLS client dot session so we can see that's coming back so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to uh, use my environment variables to bring in my proxies now i've got a video on how i use proxies which i'll link down below or it's just a few videos back in my channel so if you just go to my channel page you'll find it um, i saw all my proxy strings in environment variables and bring them in like that and to do that i always do a kind of like an if um, type thing here, just so you know, it's easier to uh, um, get. So just be just be aware that this this string here represents an environment variable on my system, and it won't work on yours. All you need to do to use your proxy is take your proxy string that you get from your provider and stick that in to the proxy part, and I'll tell you where that is uh, when we get there. I like to do it like this; it saves it for me. I don't have to blur my screen out every time I type a proxy in. Um, so I'm just creating a. Um, a, like a little if statement here and what this will do is it will if it doesn't find the environment variable on my system it's just going to quit the program because i don't want to run this without a proxy so else proxies is going to be equal to and we need to do http and then we can just do os.gets i always tab this out where i don't need to emv and the mobile proxy UK. I'm really liking the mobile proxies at the moment. They're, um, I think they're kind of they're a lot less likely to be blocked, and they pretty seem pretty quick. And obviously, I use the UK because that's my location, um, but they seem to be working really well for me at the moment. So I am using them a lot. Uh, now I have that. I'm going to do session dot uh, session is equal to TLS client dot session, and in here we want to have our client identifier. And I'm going to say that we are pretending to be Chrome. Let's go for a later version 120 and the random TLS order true. I've not really experimented with that. I don't know if that's necessary or not. And then session.proxies.update. So if you're not using environment variables for your proxies, this piece of information here, this line, uh, except without, the, without that goes in here as a dictionary. So that's what I'm doing. So you don't need all of this if you're doing that, but I would recommend that you have a function to create the session object, especially when you're doing this, because you're gonna find it a lot easier to, to do so. And I'm just going to return the session here. And that should tidy up my type hints. So now I have a function that's going to create a session for me that I can call in my, my main function. So let's do that now, main. And we'll have our session, which is equal to our create session here. I don't want too many of those. Perfect. And then I'll have my if name is equal to main. Ooh. And then we'll run our main function. Cool. So that's working. That's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this little variable here, uh, JSONLDE, which is going to be equal to an instance of the JSONLD extractor here. Now I'm going to show you what I mean, why I'm doing this, is because if I come here and go to inspect 
element, uh, not inspect element, excuse me, if I do view page source on this page, which has the companies I want to get the information from, and if I do uh, LD plus JSON here, we can see that inside this schema, oh, calm down, inside this schema is all the information that I'm basically after. So you have this element list, and this has, you know, this is all public information by the way this is all on the page here we're going to extract it from this which is why we are using uh, this here extract just saves you having to install a parser uh, to do it all manually create our new other function we're going to call this extract let's put this in the middle of the screen i'll make this one smaller maybe two smaller it's a bit more easier to read i think a bit easier to see right so i'm going to say that i'm going to pass into this function a session which is going to be a tls client session really trying to use type hints more now. And I'd say that we're going to give it the JSLDE, which is our JSON LD extractor, and the URL, which is a string. Okay, following along. And then I'm going to return uh, a list. And I'll just do this to start with here, because I want to change this up, actually. What we're going to do now, I think, it makes more sense. Now that I know what data I'm going to do, so I'm going to create my data class. So I'm going to say, this is going to be a business. And what information do we want from this? Well, let's just say we're going to get the um, name, country, name, country, review count. That seems pretty solid. So uh, I'll just bring this over from here. There we go. So now we have our data class constructed. And feel free to put in any bit, any information that you want here uh, that you can find. And I'm going to say that we're going to return a list of businesses. Tidy that up there. Cool. Right. So let's get rid of that. So now we've got this function here that's going to basically go ahead and do everything for us. We're going to create our request. So I'm going to say our response is going to be equal to session dot get. Let's move this into the middle. And this is going to be our URL. Now we don't need to put anything else in here because we've created the session for us ourselves with this function. So that's going to have everything in it that we need. And then I'm going to do if uh, response dot status code does not equal 200. Um, let's just let's do uh, print response dot status code the URL, and we'll also run an error. So we'll do raise exceptions dot tls client exception, and I'll just say bad status code blocked or something like that that'll do and we'll go to check the top yeah we don't need to import anything in else there okay so now we're basically going to cre create the request check to see if we're going to get a 200 uh, and then go from there so if we do get the 200 we're going to want to do something with it so i'm going to say that my data is going to be our jslde mm, oh i've called it dle there we go we'll change that because that's a bit confusing jslde JSON and we'll do dot extract and the response dot text. So this is going to give us all that information. And now I'm going to create a list. I'm going to call this output because I'm going to want to return a list of businesses. And then we'll do for item in data. So we want to loop through each one of the um, the JSON LD application things. This this basically this is the tag it's going to find. We see we've got three there. So we want to make sure we're going to loop through them so we get the right one with the data in that we need. So I'll do uh, if item list element. So if this is in the item, so we can see it here, uh, if it's in this, then we'll know that we're in the right place for our data. Then I'm going to do for company in the item and then we're going to reference this item list element again because you can see this is obviously a list. So we're going to say for each one of these, we're going to get this chunk of data. So we'll say for this. Now we can construct our business and I'm just going to go ahead and grab this from over here. Save me all typing this out. So all I'm doing is basically just constructing my business uh, data class with the information I have found from this JSON data that I've extracted using our JSON LDE extract here. And then I'm going to append each one to the list and I'm going to return that as output here. So I'm now returning a list. So that's basically what we're going to do in this case. So now we want to want to uh, fill in our main function. I'm going to say 4x in range because I'm going to loop over pages. 
and we'll do one to uh, four to start with. We'll just do three pages and I'll just do a quick print and we'll do uh, expecting page and X. So we're going to go through there. And if I go over to the website here and I go to the next page, scroll all the way down, you can grab the URL. This is a nice and easy one. It just changes the URL as per the page. So I'll say our URL is equal to, we'll make this an F string and we'll change this to our X. So we're going to construct the URL and then we can say our companies is equal to our extract function. We're going to give it our session, our JSLDE and our URL like so. And then we can just print out the companies and you can do whatever you want to do with this data. This is just going to be a list of data classes. So you've know, got plenty of options to, you know, whatever you want to do with it nice and easy. So let's go ahead and double check through this. It looks all good to me. I'm going to zoom a bit out so we can just see a bit more from a bird's eye view. Uh, again, create a session function. This is particularly useful when you're doing TLS client stuff because you have all these extra things you want to add in and it's going to basically you know, create our sessions, we can do everything that we need. Data class to hold our information and our extract function, which basically just loads the page up. And because we're using this TLS client, we have our good fingerprint, which means we shouldn't get blocked. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to do uv run main.py. And we can see here's the information that we're scraping through. I only chose to do three pages. But I have all the information here coming through and we can see it is different every time. So we are on different pages, which is good. So as it is, this is a very easy way to scrape data from sites like this that require that fingerprint. Now, now we wouldn't be able to do this with standard requests because we need that TLS fingerprint. And that's where something like TLS client, curl CFFI, or any of the other ones that do that come into their own. This one I found that I've been working with recently that works very, very well. And as you can see, it's pretty quick and nice and easy to use. We don't have to mess around with any browser stuff, which you know is a real pain in the ass. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you do, leave a like. If you think I could have done anything of this better, make sure you comment and tell me down below. I always appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate to everyone who's subscribed. I'm on the way to 100K, which would be a very cool milestone for me. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, if you've made it this far, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.